through here? Are you joking? Oh God. Shit. Oh my God, it's not Verity. I'm not sure whether I'll make the end, physically. Welcome back everyone to the third and final chapter in this utterly pivotal mission. There's so much at stake this time. I am really worried. By now, you know the deal. I simply must make it to the golden sands of Barmouth Bay uninterrupted and within the gold zone because as some of you may have seen over on Archie and Adam's channel they have every chance of doing the deed if I fail to do so. As I bid an anxious Verity farewell once more and trundle up into my next steep hillside, I can be pretty content with the current situation. Over 26 miles were done and dusted, and after a cracking start to day three, all things considered, I now simply had to travel six miles in six hours in order to reach the hopefully much more secluded forest camp from which I would launch my final one-day offensive to the coast. Already though, I was being reminded that no distance was guaranteed on this tortuous line. Pretty steep this is again. Kind of the theme of the trip. <laughs> oh, taxi. Loose mossy rock teamed up with the usual detritus to make this ascent a pretty tricky one. Ooh, that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> oh dear, don't quite know what to do here. Is that going to take my weight? I think just about. And even when I was past the worst of the drops, there was no real promise of an easier ride. Loads of brambles and fallen trees could really put a dent in today's plans, even if it's like 300 meters of it. Gladly, there was a shake up in the topography not too long after this. So now we've got really spongy grass with varying sized Christmas trees. Interesting. But the new stuff wasn't much better. Oh fuck, that is wet. Wetter than any grass I've been through so far. For a few hundred meters, it flicked between the two, piney forest and wet grassy bog, until I reached an opening. Look at that for a cozy little cottage with a yellow door and a silver car outside. That is a beautiful place to live, isn't it? And we are over that wood and ready to go back into the moorlands. A little section of farmland here, which is very low on the uh, hotometer. Oh God! I'm just—I've just been high for most of the day. Uh, no, not literally. I've just felt happy, and more so as the day has gone on, because I'm now over two of the scariest hurdles in those two farms and now all i have to do today i've got to be at a camp spot before dark so it's looking peachy still a lot to do on the last day don't get me wrong but camp 3a spirits have got to be high if i get there by cozy little valley that embodies everything i love about wales and away we go This rather remote place is another place I had earmarked quite geniusly. Uh, well, it's not that genius, is it? Because I ended up camping nowhere near here. But nonetheless, it's a lovely little spot and I think you could pitch your tent down here right by this babbling river. F***ing lovely. I wonder what that is. George Cook, let me know. Mm -hmm. 
as you can probably tell, the landscape was beginning to change around this point. Barbed wire fences were being replaced by ancient stone walls which randomly cordoned off for much more colourful and interesting terrain. Smaller, more irregular shaped hills offered a variety of encouraging viewpoints. Look at this for a new horizon appearing. Fuck me, I've still got a way to go, haven't I? <laughs> Kadir Idris over there, huge mountain, can't even see the top of it. That is the Wales 5 line. Uh, sorry, Wales 5. I hope there won't be a Wales 5. Wales 1 sort of went down there. I can probably see the roof of this house glimmering in the sun. The last two miles had been reasonably quick because it looked like this from above. Coming up next though, some dreaded greens. Oh dear. Okay. Oh, oh, something's got up my ass. The newly planted trees proved a bristly affair, especially when an uninvited guest rocked up. Ah, oh no. Gorse has joined the party. But what could really spoil the party now would be another gang of slimy layabouts. Okay, I need to keep quiet here. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful little road. Let's just hope this isn't as bad as it looks. <laughs> oh God, this looks awful. I think it's only 300 meters through this, but that can be a hell of a long way and it can eat into your day so much. Thankfully, this particular gang of logs was all bark and no bite. And after a tough entry, I was able to negotiate their green palace of moistness with relative ease, which is more than can be said for the twang fest that followed in this short pine section. That was awful. Also pretty awful was the next wooded section. Oh no, no, no. Now this is a mad place. Look at that. My line, where's my line going? Which way do I bloody go? Through here, are you joking? I think I literally go under there. This is madness. As tricky as it was, this mossy madness didn't drag on for too long either, and I was soon back out into the hills where I aimed to make up for lost time. Will it be a happy little music montage? You'll find out sooner than me. Oh, there's the sea. <laughs> Oh my god! Yes! What a sight that is, man. I haven't done it. I'm a long way off. 12 miles, but just to see that sea. Can't stop looking at it. We've got to get over both of those horizons first. So just still loads to do. It's, it's, you know, it's one of them. I can't celebrate, but... That is the biggest dangling of a carrot you're ever likely to get, really. It could have been the sight of that sparkling seawater, or it could have been the sheer amount of hours I'd spent alone, but I think I lost one or two of my marbles somewhere down this hillside. Thank you. If that's a message, if Kadir Idris is the god, then that's the message that this is my time. Thank you. Look at this. I love this country. Look at this place. Ah, that's better. Is it just me who loves this kind of iggledy piggledy? Don't know what it is. Maybe it's the Welsh blood in me, but I just feel like making a Neolithic home here and this being my land, my realm that I hunt and gather, provide, defend. To be fair though, I could just go home and play Age of Empires, having enjoyed the scenery. I don't know whether it's just because I'm high off the situation, but I am just in heaven. I'm mesmerised by this landscape. I think it's mainly how high I am. High off life, guys. It's cooler than you think. 
Believe me, I've done both. This mystical pastel coloured paradise continued for another half a mile or so before it abruptly met this, one of the many patches of semi-unidentifiable terrain that littered this six mile stretch and once again threatened to hold me up. Ooh, wobbly left footer. It was another hodgepodge of pine trees, grassy bogs, and generally just incredibly uneven ground with an annoying amount of foliage on top of it. Ah. There were some nice moments, such as this ancient stone wall. How old, how old must this wall be? Oh, hundreds and hundreds of years old. But by the time I was out of it all, I was hot, bothered, and pretty damn exhausted until my GPS managed to find a way to cheer me up. Huh. And at this gate, exactly, we've just reached another significant milestone. Can you guess what it is? Yep, we are three quarters of the way through. I'll tell you what, this six miles has been, there's a lot more to it than when you look on the map. So I'm gonna climb over this gate and this ancient mossy bridge Hopefully it doesn't give way. And this is farmland guys, so I need to I need to stay alert. As well as over the three-quarter point, I was also less than a mile from that crucial target of Camp 3A. A forest camp perched on the edge of the vast Coe di Brenin Forest Park and conveniently accessible for Verity and the car. Typically though, it was not going to be a stress-free stroll over the last hill and into the trees because there was one final farm of the day waiting to wedge a spanner into the works. Ooh, it's actually not great. Oh, man, so many vehicles there. There is a public footpath that runs just there, but that's only for a moment that I'll cross that. I mean, someone's going to be out to get that washing inside at some point. So there are people about this bloody gorse though. Give me a day off. Here goes guys. I'm running conversations through my head over and over, man. It's so stressful at this point. Oh God. Through there, it's gotta be. As you might be able to make out from the plectrum sized portion of useful footage that I managed to capture here, I chose to walk outside of the garden perimeter, around 15 meters north of the line, where I could gaze safely at the vigorously flapping washing, which was sure to be harvested imminently by the farmer's wife. Hopefully I'm out of view now. Once past the worst of it, I increased the speed, went for the open gate rather than the awkward fence, and despite seeing open car boots in the driveway, slipped past undetected. That's a result. Thank you very much. And here we are at the woodland. The day's almost over. Being extra careful not to fill my boots with any more putrid water in this final tree trunk scattered assault course of the day, I had my first view of the campsite where there were already question marks. Ooh, now what does that sign say? Because that's exactly where I was going to camp. <laughs> oh my god. Images are being monitored and record, recorded for the purposes of crime prevention and detection. Although the phantom camera was most likely for fly tipping or maybe even dogging, I was keen to camp a bit further into the wood. I'd need to wait for Verity to come and scout that out for me though, and very soon I could hear a rumble that wasn't my belly. I can hear an engine. Oh my god, it's not Verity. It's a machine. He's gone. Good work, mate. Where is Verity though? Is she driving up or is she walking up? She's past the meeting time. So I wonder what's happened. I was fairly sure this was a public road, but the log stacker now had me doubting myself. 
Hearty shouts from Washing Line Farm added to my confusion. Can you hear that? Sounds like a farmer ordering their sheepdog. Here she is. So who was shouting? Uh, a farmer, I think, because it sounds, it sounds like they're shouting a dog, either to sh herd sheep. It's loud, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, Verity has kindly had a little scout down that very inviting looking path and confirmed that there is, there are some nice places to camp. So I'm gonna do one last little bit of missioning down here, turn the GPS off, and I'm gonna pitch the tent while it's still light. All oh, my legs have seized up again. I'll race you. No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, it's been a right old day, this has. Big day of missioning. I hope this camp spot's nice and flat. This is it, this is the line right here. You say there's a decent spot just up there? That's all right. Okay then, that is the end of day three. What a day. I am going to clock off here and have a nice, hopefully relaxing camp tonight and a good sleep ready for the final slog. <sighs> I'm chuffed, but there's still more to do. <sighs> oh, lovely. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm all tucked up in bed again. Verity's gone back to Bala. Oh, the sheep. Oh, God. Oh. Wind is blowing again, which is slightly worrying because of tall pine trees, which, as we know, are prone to falling. Um, the idea of getting the mission done tomorrow is so exciting, but it's also nerve wracking as well because there is farmland towards the end and the idea of it being scuppered towards the end is just terrifying, to be honest. It really is. I mean, I'm not going to do this again, am I? It was a decent enough sleep considering the wind, but I was going to have a hard job keeping up with the pace of day three whose biggest deviations, by the way, apart from the 34 metres at the roadside farm, were a small handful of 14 or 15 metres. Day four was almost as long at just under 10 miles, but had a considerably bigger amount of climbing at well over 1300 metres. To be honest though, with a real mixture of terrains, it was almost impossible to predict how it was going to go. Something I learned on mine and Ben's downhill but brutal final day in Wales 3. This is one of the, probably the worst thing I've ever been through as a standalone obstacle. All I could do was focus on what was in front of me, starting with what was surely going to make or break any hopes of a one day finish. A mile of steep forest featuring two sizable rivers. Down we go. Oh, the legs have been through it, man. They are hurting. Oh my God. Ancient wall. Oh, shit me, that was a drop. <laughs> okay, speed. Today is going to be speed. A bit too much so than what's sensible, probably. But... Oh. <sighs> There's our first river. The Afon Wen. <laughs> hell, this looks steep. Very steep, but doable. And the forest as well, the other side looks beautiful. Look at that. The bit that's on my line is actually too steep. And even this is bad. Okay, here we go. Oh, can I do this without having to take my shoes off? I believe I can. Oh, there we go. Get in. That shaved off a bit of time for me. Not only would my feet be staying dry until at least the next river, but this forest was an absolute dream to pass through. It was home to one potential predator. I'm trying if I can to avoid any forestry commission trucks or vans uh, because you know, I think you're meant to stay to the tracks basically. They might wonder what the hell I'm doing. But that was the closest I came to them. Even when I was able to stick to a track for nearly 200 meters. Oh, that is amazing. Oh. 
Don't get me wrong, there were dense parts, but for once they didn't dominate proceedings. It's, it's, this is a different kind of forest. More natural, more beautiful, more walkable. And that's gonna make a really positive impact on the rest of this day. An even steeper ravine tested that theory, but once through its jumbly branches, it was time to tackle the biggest question mark of the morning. And there it is, the Maudak. A river I've waded across before, believe it or not. Hello there, don't mind me. Shit me. How's that for a drop? Now this is going to be cold. Oh, got to be really careful here with my ankle. Firm footing, Tom. Okay, that's deep. That's really deep. As you can probably gather from the noises you can hear in the background, this wasn't a pain-free crossing. Ow, ow. Oh, 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 God, f***ing hell. And I'm bleeding. I don't really know what the cause of that is, but it's bleeding a fair bit. I'm just going to put my socks on and soldier on with the day. Oh, that's good. Now it's time to navigate up what seems to be private properties. Let's find out. Hmm. Could have chose a better place to stand. Straight up here, it seems. I am going to oblige and use the bridge. Okay, there's some sort of yard there. We're straight up there, so... Yeah, I don't know. Don't know whose land this is. Oh, shit. Got to get over that wall. No, because we're way off to the right. That's fine. Don't know what that is. It might be abandoned. Here it is. And we're online now. So that's perfect. That's a result, guys. Let's smash the rest of these woods and beyond. So with the forest almost over and done with, day four was well underway. Raging quads aside, the only real thing that chipped away at my morale was the thought of the crescendo of farming activity that stood pretty much right on my finish line, less than nine miles away now. There was a potential practice run at the top of this brambly forest. I love a good viewpoint up here, behind these rocks. Let's make this quick. No hiding now. But in the end, it was just a house, which I might actually put an offer in for at some point, because it's about as idyllic as it gets. Okay, now it's up into the wilderness, once again. As lovely as this place was, it was very hard to appreciate it on this occasion. My legs, man. It sounds like I'm moaning constantly, I know, but I can't describe how painful this climb actually was. The fact that I had no idea that this was the biggest climb of the trip didn't help from a psychological standpoint, but the lack of fitness coming into the mission was now well and truly catching up. Oh, my legs are beyond seizing up. At this point, I'm not sure whether I'll make the end physically. Come on. What's next? Please, no more gorsy hills. False horizon after false horizon appeared, each one giggling louder than the last. I giggled back. <laughs> until finally, not the top, but some sort of respite in the form of this strange looking forest. I hope this forest is all right, because that is going to take me ages. The forest, which was mainly dry and had most of its trees still upright, didn't slow me down too much. Okay, I think I can see the end of that little sheep pen. <laughs> but as predicted, the gorse lathered hillside beyond most certainly did. Ah, you pillock. As well as the sea of loose boulders beyond them. <laughs> as a reward for conquering the biggest climb of the mission, 
even if I didn't know it, a mildly amusing view of the caravan park from Wales 1. I'm going under. And at the crest of the hill, the shimmering Maudach estuary. And there's the estuary. Wow, that does spur me on. I was now just over a mile away oh from God. a significant meeting point which went by the name of this. Much to my disappointment, that wasn't in this valley, but the next okay. one. Ah, uh, even the descent is slow, man. It's really frustrating. Maybe God Idris over there is telling me to be patient and that doing this in one day might not be possible. Maybe I need to come to accept that. Considering most of the harder stuff was in the first half of the day though, the pace wasn't terrible and the legs were actually starting to warm up a bit. Another hill done. I'm struggling, but I am going over some big things, man. Knocking them out the park is great difficulty. You can see the open sea there. That is really spurring me on. Over the next three or four brows arose a welcome sight. Oh my God. Verity was waiting patiently down on this remote gravel track, anxiously stirring my hot meal in anticipation for my late morning arrival. Oh dear. But unbeknownst to me, that oh dear had just set the tone for what was going to be the most horrendous valley I'd ever had the displeasure of traversing. Oh my God. No. Shimmy my way down. Oh. The huge slabs of rock way up at the top were slow moving and did pose a slight risk of coming loose, but I actually had quite a lot of fun picking roots down them. It was when I entered the tree line though that things got really shit. This is absolutely horrendous, man. This is what you do not plan for. Everywhere you tread is holy and not in a good way. You can't really make it out from the camera, but the ground was basically entirely made up of boulders covered with a layer of moss that prevented you from seeing where the holes were. Bad ankle, traverse this. That'll be fun. But somehow it got worse. Do not add brambles into the mix. No, 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 no. That's just ridiculous. It really was an insane test of the old balance and I had to be careful not to get cocky here, as well as a bit further down in this branch strewn section. Oh, dangerous. What are you doing? And there were more hidden drops too. Shit. Now this is monstrous, isn't it? Oh, I think it's doable. Right on the line, man. I think I can sort of shimmy my way down this. Yeah. Oh, ah, that is a stroke of right luck. Oh. What if my line had been there, man? Wow. We'd have been deviating. The precarious mossy boulders continued for a while after this, testing my patience and daring me to skip across them heedlessly. Then, Ah, there's the road. Oh, get in. That was nasty. Oh, on we go. You'd think, just as this poor sod did, that the flat portion of this valley would be fairly straightforward and not even worse than the descent. Well, we'd all be wrong. But don't worry, I'll add some oh upbeat music in there to stifle the groans. Oh, what is this nonsense, man? Oh shit, I'm literally in horrible water. Why, man? Why does this exist? Bramble's Swamp. Well, that's enough really, isn't it? This is horrendous! Horrendous. That was hard. 
If ever I needed a break, it was here. Those last sections had tested my body and mind more than anything so far. At least it certainly felt that way. I could chomp on my pickled egg, safe in the knowledge that my battling had just about kept me in the game, but the monstrosity that was staring at me through the passenger window reminded me not to get too comfortable. Nearly there, aren't we? See you later. Oh, this looks equally bad. Mad place, isn't it? The thing is, I've done three miles in four hours. That's too slow. The farmland at the end will be quick. I mean, I intend to run it. So that will balance things out, but it really depends on the three miles that precede that farmland. If they're as slow as they were, that might be too tight. And that'll mean I'll have to camp out. Right, I cannot film and, and traverse this. This climb left no room for lapses in concentration. Ooh. But what myself and Verity, who watched on helplessly, were most worried about at this point was the gigantic rocky mess that stood at the top of this climb. I never had time to check it out on the recce trip and for all I knew it could be horrendously dangerous and result in some hefty deviations. The nearer I got, the more likely that began to feel. It's pretty cool, I can't lie. We are deviating a little bit here. Oh mate, you need to f***ing be careful. You twit. Okay, I can... What do I do? I think I've got to go this way, you know. Because there's uncertainty over there. Drops. Upon reaching the first of these big round rock formations, it was already feeling a bit scary to adhere to the line. Oh, blimey, which way do I go? I managed to find a route up to a certain point, but being alone, I didn't fancy risking the summit. That just doesn't look safe to me. Looks like the rocks could drop off at any moment. Having been sent down this gully for a painful distance, I did just manage to find an alternative route up right on the precipice of the platinum zone, but it was damaging my precious Burdell score and taking up valuable time. Right, I'm really praying now that it's relatively flat and there aren't loads of drops everywhere. Idris, God of Wales, please be kind. And to my delight, Idris delivered. There was nothing too bad after that, and even this worryingly shadowy looking part here, although not without its drops, was just about doable in the end. I think this whole thing is the big one and it looks like there's a gully a beautiful meter long gully beautifully positioned thank you Idris threat averted right on this is the moment in the trip where I really started to feel like I was entering the final stages the rocky mess behind me represented all the slow moving terrain that had plagued the past dozen or so miles and the enticing expanse of open heather and bracken that lay ahead symbolized the much kinder passage to the coast. I get one bit of grass on this whole day and it's uphill. You having a laugh? The only thing that really interrupted my rhythm was these stone walls which seemed to be increasing in size and number. Oh, no, get off. Thank you. The balance you've got to have on these, man. Some of them. But it could only be interpreted as a sign that I was moving ever closer to my goal. There's yesterday, tides out. Good, that means the sea will be closer by the time I get there. <laughs> Less distance to walk. The climbing was still painful, but much like when running a long distance race, the allure of the finish line was somehow cancelling out whatever pains my body was feeling. Don't sprain your ankle now, Tommy. <sighs> At this point, there was just one horizon to go until the big final mountain that would give us a full-on view of both the sea 
and all the farmer's fields that lay before it. Let's get ourselves there, shall we? One last punishing climb into the drizzly heavens led me up onto the crest of the ridge and to the symbolic wall that lay along it. Right, over this wall, I believe it's just downhill from here, pretty much, give or take. Oh, let's go. Aya! Bring it on, farmers. Oh my God, what a glorious sight. Because I took my GoPro off my head to check if I was recording, you do get to share that sight with me for this brief moment, and it was incredible. Approaching the open sea for the first time on the first continuous Wales crossing was hard to even comprehend. Man, I can't contain my excitement and happiness, even though I could still fail. It's weird. As focused as I tried to remain, questions continued to race through my head. Should I be happy that success is so likely? Or should I be nervous about the prospect of somehow failing? Would a farmer let me climb this wall? Could they be persuaded or even bribed? Soon enough, it felt like at least one of those questions was about to be answered. Okay, I think we've reached a point now, guys, where, you know, over the brow of any hill, there could be a farmer on a vehicle um, because on the map as you can see there it's a lot more uniform and grid like a lot more regularly farmed and controlled so this is where the vigilance really sort of begins what worries me about these walls is they take care to climb over a barbed wire fence I can sort of vault over which is exactly how me and Ben escaped that angry farmer these, they're delicate and tricky and a farmer wouldn't be so keen on you attempting that. My strategy here, by the way, because it's mainly downhill, I'm just gonna obviously look down and see if I can see any vehicles and then sort of keep doing that at each wall, peering over each wall, waiting, watching. With that firmly in mind, I moved quickly through the five or six higher up and relatively out of view fields that would lead up to this final brow. Thus far, I'd seen absolutely no activity and I also knew that any engine noise from down below would be carried straight to my ears by the finally useful westerly winds that had roared against me for days but that now carried with them the roar of the sea. From this point on though, there would be little hiding. Here we go, oh wow, there it is, there's the farm. There it is. Can you see any quad bikes, any tractors moving around? I cannot. I think by the time I get to, yeah, the third field back, that's when I'll make a run for it. This is it guys, this is what it's all come down to. Surely it can't fail now. Okay, here we go. It begins. I'm going to start jogging. Is that a vehicle? Yes, it is. Might walk for now. Okay, pretty out of sight of that. Next wall. Oh God, that's high. Oh. I am blocked, the view is blocked for now, surely I can just run now, no one's going to get me, come on, the adrenaline is going, this is not a good fence, oh god. Approaching now was the final and most decisive field of them all, there would be obstacles beyond the main road, but reaching it spelled almost certain victory. Come on, Tom. Last field. Surely I'm home and dry. Come on. 
honestly don't think anyone's seen me. Quite hidden to be fair. It's really helped. Okay. Please don't be a police car. No. I'm just going straight over. Well, there's no cars. Might as well run here too. Right. This last bit could be awful. But I'm past the hottest part. Last barbed wire fence of my life? No, probably not. Last dry stone wall. They've been fairly good to me overall. Gorse has featured prominently on this mission and I don't think it's had its last bow just yet. And we have brambles. I mean, this, this could be awful, but I'm willing to suffer. And suffer was what I would do okay. right after this tractor. It's moving. Is that on the main road? Let's just get into here. I don't know whether he saw me. I'm not sure, but there's no way he's going to follow me in here. 300 meters of this. Bloody hell. These brambles are on steroids and so is this gorse. This might be the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't far off, but I don't think any of you really care at this point, And ultimately, Ow. neither did I. I will beat you. You won't win, Gorse. It's actually quite comical looking back at just how roided up these gorse and brambles were. It's almost as if in the absence of any farmer bosses, the game had filled the final stage with my next two biggest foes. Ah, where are we? No one comes here. No one. Well, I finally, you know, got a breather in the middle of this gorse hell. And just say how chuffed I am to get past the farms. The only thing that can make me fail now. This, this is trying its best, but it, it won't. I will get through and I will be on that beach uh, at about four o'clock and it's going to be glorious. It's just this painful barrier that I have to push through to get there. Look at it. Where do I go? I mean, that is... Can you imagine if I just couldn't get through it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna. Thankfully, there was a gap in the otherwise genuinely impassable wall of thorns that took me to this track, which I was able to safely crawl underneath and into this swampy wood where I prepared myself for the very last potential hiccup. I've had these reeds before or something similar. My experience so far has been that the water isn't that deep. I'm really hoping that this isn't too bad. In terms of how many meters we've got of this, 173. Quite a lot in a way, but if it's not too bad, then not that much. Oh man, these are thick. I'm coming for you, beach. I am coming. Ah. Okay, it's, it's wet. Fuck it, you came for entertainment, didn't you? Oh, oh. oh that's deep. Oh shit, oh, that's really bad. It's Norway all over again. Oh, oh, me, that's horrible. Oh, oh, I need to wash that off. Get me to that sea, man. I've got a cut on that foot as well. Feet are fully submerged here, but we're about 30 meters from the end. Oh, it's deep, it's deep. 12 meters, why do I see a hill? Five meters, why is there a digger here? Here we are, this is it. Oh, oh my God, don't know what that's doing here. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh. Get in. Let me get down there. Where's Verity? She's not even here. Right, let's finish this. Don't know if I'm actually going to be able to get to the end of my line because the tide is in, as I predicted. 
No, I am. I've done it. You ready? Oh my god, man. Dismiss. See you later, mate. I will never have to look at another Wales line. Never have to go through another gorse bush. Worry about a Welsh farmer ever again. Do I need to taste this? That is as salty as my ball bag at the moment. I could sit here all day. Yes, man! Come on! We did it! Cardigan Bay in January never felt so good. I wonder if that's Bear Grylls. They must have been thinking, what the f is that numpty doing? Oh man, it's done. It's done, it's over, I've done it. Fourth time of asking, nailed it, planned it well, executed it well. I'll talk more with you very soon. Important calls to Martyrs, Ben and Greg were made as I made my way over to Verity's unfortunately stranded car, occasionally broken up by the odd shiver-inducing glance at the shore. Oh. The truth is though, as relieved as I was that it was all over, the whole mission felt like a bit of a blur. Over in nearby Barmouth, I attempted to collect my thoughts. Well, the uh... The sun has set on the whole charade, guys. It's over. I was just saying to Verity, I, my brain is not managing to, uh, to let it sink in at the moment. The magnitude of what that means and what I've achieved, that doesn't mean that I don't feel massively relieved and massively proud of myself. But I think those feelings will amplify over time. Just feels great to, it, that's the other thing just on a physiological level feels so good just to be sitting in a room and to be able to just walk down the road go to a pub i'm gonna have a pint later i did dry january and this will be my first pint since like new year's eve four days we were out there weren't we yeah. verity did absolutely an amazing job facilitating my mad trip once again but like on a serious note did such a good job of um organizing everything bags and bags and bags of clothes and food and equipment so crucial to the success this time so thanks verity everyone she's pulling a very <laughs> cute face <laughs> don't know we, we just nailed it didn't we like the plan we were in the zone yeah i did my side of things just soldiered on um didn't get myself hurt yeah um and yeah i don't think at any point you were really in any that negative frame of mind really no i think overall I think you, you were are. like i think you were in quite good spirits when i came to see you yeah and that that gave me a bit of a boost yeah yeah just like i know that you're confident with what you're doing the weather i have to say was incredible for this time of year mm. The combination of the lack of farming activity with this weather mm. it was just a golden blend. Yeah. It really was. Basically, to sum up, we've used all the experience that we've gained, all mm. the things that have gone wrong before, and we've finally put it to bed. I can go to bed a, a happy man, especially once I've had a pint. See you in the pub. It took me four years and four attempts, but I finally got there. It should and would have been put to bed in the farmland 18 months prior with Ben, but in the end, the mountains proved a solid strategy. Day four was platinum, with the biggest deviation being 24 and a half meters at the rocky mess, but by and large, again, it was pretty straight. A platinum mission would have been amazing, but I'll take a light gold all day long. 
As for the Burdell score, I'm very proud to say that it was a corking 93.41%. Do stay tuned for the line review video for a closer examination of all the major deviations, as well as more statistics from the Score My Line website. I can't stress just how long this mission and therefore condensed this series was. There were loads of scenes that I had to leave out the edit this time, so do check out my Patreon page where you'll be able to see all the best deleted scenes for the measly price of a dollar as well as early access to the two blockbusting adventures that I've got lined up for May. I want to thank everyone who has supported me on Patreon throughout the years and helped facilitate this crazy journey as well of course as all of you watching on YouTube. You guys can help me immensely by just liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you already haven't so please do so if you appreciate all the effort that's gone into these episodes. Once again, Verity is an absolute saint and I'm going to talk more about her involvement in another upcoming video. But finally, I want to give a huge thanks to Archie and Adam. If it wasn't for their thoughtful gesture of letting me know when their departure date was, I might not have been the first person to achieve this. But that begs the question, did they succeed? You can find the answer to that question over on their channel, where the last episode of their three-part series has just dropped. And that is just about it from me for now. I think if we've learned one thing from this whole exercise, it's that perseverance and belief go a hell of a long way. Happy adventuring.